Happy Monday to everybody on the Positive Vibes group. Hope you've all had a fabulous bank holiday weekend. You had some V celebrations on Friday. I love seeing all of your pictures and all of your posts. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you're on live today, drop us some comments below. Let us know where you are coming in from. And some of you I know are going to be watching the replay. So don't forget to put hashtag replay or just a replay underneath so we can see who's... Um, who's watching this fabulous interview. And John, I was just saying earlier that this group is all about positive vibes and you're kind of the epitome yes. of that, how positive mindset you are. So welcome to our group, good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. I, well, yes, someone's, uh, quite a few people have said to me over, uh, over the lockdown, why, I'm, it all started when I got asked to do a L Lorraine Kelly, you know, yeah. in the morning. And I did it from here because I had the foresight to uh, set up a little studio. This is a br literally a broom cupboard. This is seven foot. This is a wall. It's seven foot by three and a half foot. So I soundproofed it. I went to an upholster uh, uh, to get uh, the, the right uh, dampening material to make it a dead room. And I, got, and I bought it all on. And it all arrived. And I thought, well, well it, it might work. Anyway, I'm doing Police Interceptors voiceover from yeah. my house, which is a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. So technology today is just fantastic. And we can do things like this. Yeah. So um, I did Lorraine from that. And I had great feedback from people going, oh, my God, what, why are you so happy and positive? And uh, so one of the reasons is re I, I've said is uh, my job. I think some people's work is their drive. Yeah. I think they're, they're actually, the, 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 but not only their drive, it's their work's their social life in yeah. some respects as yeah. well. They have a lot of friends at work. So, especially in an office type scenario, you know, you get to know people over the years and you're quite pally. So I think the social uh, aspect of work uh, is missed greatly. Uh, also, so as an actor, I mean, I, I don't work all the time. There are those that just work and work and work and work, but I don't. And uh, just before we went into lockdown, um, I didn't have any work. I, I didn't. There was the, 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 the cold feet wasn't going this year. They were giving it a rest because they wanted to do some kind of thing abroad, kind of like a ninety-minute special, carry on abroad. I called it. So and that didn't happen. So before lockdown, I was prepared for my own lockdown. Uh, you know, I was all ready to kind of do that. But the other thing I have to stress is, fourteen years ago this Christmas, I gave up drinking. Now that was serious lockdown. That was proper because what I had to do was say, right, it's enough partying. You, that's, you've, you know, it's trying to get the better of you. You've got to, you've got to call it a day. One thing I do remember specifically was when I worked away from home, that was my kind of worst time because it would just like clean the mini bar out and wake up fully clothed <laughs> in the bed in the morning. So it was, it was just madness. And then, uh, when I decided to get sober, I'd carry, uh, I'd, uh, I'd get picked up. You, I'm on a lot of jobs, you get picked up, or the taxi driver pick you up from the station, and they'd help you unload your bags when you're going in the hotel. And it, it'd go, bloody hell, what's in this? <laughs> he went, how long are you staying for? And I went, two nights. And he went, what have you got in this one? The clothes were as light as a feather. Now, what was in that bag was, and this is what I'm kind of stressing to people is, only it's a great expression and it's i didn't come up with is only boring people get bored yeah. so in that bag at the time this sort of dates it yeah yeah was uh, a nintendo ds uh, a psp a portable playstation yeah so all that and games i'm a drummer so a practice pad and sticks uh a portable dvd player you know with a lid that lifted yeah, up I and those, yeah. DVDs. yeah yeah dvds um speakers for my ipod to sit in yeah um and uh what else did i have in there uh some a couple of books and uh lavender oil uh to relax oh, yeah like that yeah lavender oil in a little burner you know with a little shell the the, the, uh -huh. the little cup on top and, and a tea light i was always a bit worried about burning but i was always yeah. present oh. when the, when, <laughs> when it was so yeah and uh, the cds were usually uh relaxation uh, you know, spa music kind of stuff. Not not whale music or anything like that. And taking this kind of survival kit around with me when I was working away from home, 
was a lifesaver. And that was my lockdown. All the other cats were out in the, were in the hotel bar. Yeah, yeah. Or in the local village getting absolutely hammered. Because yeah. actors don't need any encouragement. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> no way. So I just thought, I'm going to have to lock down. I locked down. And then I locked down at home as well. And I like, so yeah. I love gaming. I love reading. But, the, but I love cooking. I, that's yeah. one of my absolute... It's kind of, kind of like a, a completely natural surrounding for you right now because I was looking at your career... There's nothing and, different. Yeah, you've been, you've been on our screens for decades now, John. I mean, you've mm. been um, a comedian, an impressionist, an actor. Like you say, you're a really keen chef as well, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the moment. But I wanted to kind of go rewind quite a few years and go back to the beginning because I read somewhere, I'm always really interested in how people kind of launched into the arts or when they first started to kind of think this is what I want to do and I heard that even at the the small age of five you had a magic show and you were doing impressions yeah. of Frank Spencer that's and you kind right. of knew back then that that's what you wanted to do I just want I just kind of like loved the attention I loved you know I loved I loved making people laugh yeah I remember it was only recently I remember because I, I, uh, there were they, they were very encouraging in uh, a, a, a school. And at my primary school, I played Fagin in Oliver. Now that's oh, tough. Yes. It's very, very hard. Yeah. So well, I've only, it was just like, it must have been 10 when I did that. But yeah, I remember I did, there was a, we had a village hall. Uh, I don't, you know, they still, they still exist. And I think some, some, some people have great community kind of, you yeah. know, experience. And they used to put shows on and, 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 and amateur plays and amdram and stuff and they did one and I said oh I'll do I was too young to do Tommy Cooper because I didn't I didn't have the three voice you see <laughs> I had to do <clears throat> I had to do Frank Spencer because everyone did him that's it's, it's kind of like a rite of passage <laughs> if you're um if you're an impressionist back in the day if you're my age every impressionist could do a pretty good Frank Spencer you see but it was so multi-layered, there was different ways of doing him, you see. So, so I did him doing magic. And the, the, the story goes, I asked for someone, I asked for a five, it's like 1976, this. I asked someone for a fiver. It's a magic wallet where the fiver disappears. And I put the fiver in the wallet and I went like, and I opened it up and it had gone. And I never give it him back. And, I, and like that, in 1976, five quid. That was, some, that was a paid gig, that. Yeah. That was my first paid gig. So there's a lot of money then. So then did you uh, kind of go on the circuit then, John? Because I know that you and Steve Coogan were great friends and, and probably... Yeah, Polly we met. Hitting Image was one of the first things that I recall you doing. Forgive me. I met Steve at Polly. He was doing it. Steve went, oh, he's good. You're good at voices. He said you should send the tape in. And they sent an audio cassette in with quite a few on. But I did it right, you know. I did it kind of... I, 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 I uh, kind of got background music on it and I kind of wrote little sketches. So I wrote sketches with music, not just me going, you know, doing a, just a, a load of voices. Yeah. So I wrote jokes and I wrote little sketches with music and sound effects. And it kind of must have stood out from the others. Yeah. I think, that, you know, I put that, I went that extra distance for it and uh, it paid off. I got the gig. Yeah. But yeah. you start small. I was kind of, I was Gaza, but all he did was cry. And I just went, <laughs> and it's, it's like sweet. The water yeah. would spray out of his eyes. <laughs> I remember uh, that. And then obviously you went on to do the, the fast show, which is um it's now coming back for a one-off special, isn't it? But obviously it's a one-off, yeah. We've done that. We just did it before. It already. Like, we've shot it, yeah. We just okay. got it in. It was the week, the Monday before I went up there and did it, and then the other boys did theirs because we couldn't all work on the same day. Uh but it's a documentary um about the show. Because it was our 25th anniversary last year, and they went to the BBC, Paul and Charlie, yeah. to suggest we did a special. And the Beeb said, no. Really? It wasn't, didn't, yeah, budget or something. It didn't come in right. I just thought that, anyway. So uh, UK TV picked up on it, and we've done a documentary, but the, the, the joy of this is that the, we are interviewed in character. So the character talks about how his experience was in the fast show. Right, and how easy was it to yeah. slip back into those characters? After oh, it's easy. Like a well, it's like, if you've created it, if you've fleshed it out, yeah, it's just there for, for life, you know. I can the always just switch it on. Like Fat Bob and um, Louis Balfour, the kind of the jazz yeah. thing with, with the hair. But, but like everyone's hair in lockdown now, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm kind of like nurturing my <laughs> curls. I mean, I... Tracing the roots. 
I, I, I don't know what I'm turning into. I, I look like probably, I don't know. I, I've just yeah. left it and the beard as well. I kind of, normally I cut the beard in here and under here. I kind of like do a line there, cut that in and cut. I'm starting cutting that in again because it looks a bit strange, the hair here. Well, it's and I've just sort of like gone natural. I've just kind of see what I just, I've, 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 I've had it cut for a month for, for as long as I know, uh -huh. once a month. And now I'm just kind of, you know, let's see what organically. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Right. I've actually forgotten what colour my hair was, John, until this this happened. I'm like, actually, I don't. It's, it's all right. Once no, it, it looks, looks all right. right. All right. I'm okay. That looks like. I'm gonna say that, fortune. That looks all right. Yeah, it looks fine. We're all good. I thought it, you see, people don't. No, no, it's just kind of. <laughs> I think that's. I think self self care is very important in this time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think joggers and pajamas and sweats is you know the what and slip you know oversized yeah. slippers with the it's grinch on self pride isn't it and just getting up and yeah i think of course it is but i think it will put here uh yeah, well-being wise it? it makes you feel better it does and, and i think to, to to allow yourself to become just you know a one-man bacteria factory in a pikachu onesie <laughs> is um <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just not good is it really i shower and you know every day even yeah. though i'm kind of having a bit of a um a, a facial and hair ex experiment really yeah um there will come a point where i went because the kids really want to cut it they want i know next door oh, got I'm loose. i've had the uh the hair clippers all over my two boys they all look like um Complete thugs now, completely bold, all well, shaven number one all over. Anyway, we digress. We're talking about our beauty habits here. Let's get back to the fashion. Tell me, oh, you shot it already. When is when are we going to get to see that, John? Um, well, we think autumn. Uh, it's UK TV, so it'll be uh, kind of UK gold. Uh, the, the UK TV that they've got a few channels. Yeah. So we've shot, we, it, it's done, it's in the can, it's just down to the edit now. So they've done the offline edit, but they can't do, I don't know. There's quite a few things you can do. I mean, I'm being in and done a voiceover because you can socially distance doing it. Yeah, yeah. Because you go in and you go into a separate booth and there's glass and the engineers the other side. And so that's all right. I've done it a couple of times. I did, I've done a couple of voiceovers that way, but I can do a lot of them from here. Yeah. But that was shot just before lockdown, and it, London was very eerie, yeah. very very eerie, because it's I mean it's totally thrive. I mean, it's it's buzzing. There's this um, this Hyde Park thing worries me greatly. There's have you seen this? No, what's that this morning? The gathering uh, of people, uh, anti-vaccine uh, freedom fires. Oh yes, there's a lot of it on social media. I mean, one of the reasons I set this. Uh, is, it a, is it a joke? Well, do you know what? Everyone's entitled to their opinion. There's a lot of research to be done. I don't really want to give my, my opinion. No, on no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the vaccines. I, I don't think it's a good idea for a yeah. mass of people to meet in a park. No, oh, gosh, no, no. Absolutely not. Absolutely. No, I'm not talking. No, I won't get into the politics of vaccination. No, no it's, it's just like this part kind of, of worms, isn't it? We could. I saw, I saw, I saw it, and I went, "What is this? What is it? Really? It's madness, isn't it? Absolutely." Well, no, it is. Yeah, there's so, always got to be someone on the other yeah, side. Yeah, obviously, fashion show is a big one. Put some comments in the um, box below if anyone remembers. Oh, loads of people remember the fashion show, but some of the characters that you can remember from there. Um, and obviously, Cold Feet has been on our TV screens. I think well, nine series you've done of that so far. With ten, is it nine? Yeah. Coming. Uh, what's happened is. We were going to shoot, uh, like I say, Carry On Abroad, a 90-minute special. Yeah. Uh, but that, that fell through for various reasons. And, uh, but it, we couldn't have done it anyway now. It couldn't have done it anyway. So, um, yes, we will reconvene. It's not, uh, we've not, well, the show's not been cancelled. It's just when. So there's, there's definite talk of us coming back. Uh, we... Would, I would hope for a 10th series, maybe more, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the word on the street is that it's it's definitely not finished for good, but we're just having a break from it uh, at the yeah. moment, yeah. which and is it's fine. Such a big part of um, British TV, hasn't it? And um, if you could look back at your career, I know this is going to be quite a hard question, John. I mean, you've done so many things. You're a professional drummer, actor, comedian, precious, like I said at the beginning. If you could look back and think, well, do you know what? That was a, one of the biggest highlights for me. Was there kind of a moment that sticks out for you that kind of 
you think back to now that was a real highlight for you in your career? Well, Cold Feet's a great show. I mean, coming back and that first, I will never forget going to a screening of the first episode when we came back in 2016. Uh, full of uncertainty, massive potential car crash, really, uh, you know. But kind of learn from the mistakes of other shows that have done uh, kind of, um, uh, uh, what's the, reunion shows and things. We had to, it had to be right. Everyone had to agree to do it. And, you know, and it all, it had been mooted for a few years that we do one, but we, we didn't, he didn't have a script. It was just talked about. Well, there was a script. It was tangible. Anyway, we read it and we thought, oh, that's pretty good, this. Anyway, I remember we went to a screen at Media City in a place called On The... I think it was called On The Seventh. It's like a bar, but it's got a little cinema in it. And I went to it and it was just cast and producers. It was a very small circle. And I, I walked out of that and I was overwhelmed. And they went, I, and they went right, uh, canapes now and drinks. And I went, I'm going home. And they went, well, I went, I I, I, I'm a bit too overwhelmed. I'm too overwhelmed. And I was so delighted, absolutely <laughs> thrilled that it was so good again. Yeah. Because there was so much resting on it. I remember Jimmy turned to me and said, it's pretty good, da, 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 pretty good. And I went, no. He said, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? And I went, I'm going, I can't cope. And I couldn't. I didn't want to do a post-mortem of it. I didn't want to go, you know, sit through it and criticise, well, that worked, this. I just was so happy I was back in a winning thing. And it just proved it. I mean, the first show got so many viewers and... It's just loved. People take that show to their hearts because it's uh, it's good. Cool. It's, it's genuine, you know. Relate to at least one of the characters, though, can't they? And it kind of it just is is so relatable to a lot of people, and it's um, yeah, it's totally. Got a, like a cult following, really, hasn't it? It has. It has absolutely. Due to be a bit funnier. I think the older ones are a bit funnier. I think. I think. I think it needs to be. I think it, on the laughometer, it needs to. It's been quite poignant, really, recently. There's a lot of a lot of hardships. Hard like Coronation Street and all of those ones. I mean, go back ten years; they were very, very funny, and it's it's become more and more serious as the as the years have gone on. I would like to think, Leanne, that the backlash of all this will be that, that there isn't enough com comedy on TV at all. BBC Three went from TV to, to um, online because they saw the the power of YouTube. Uh, they kind of went, well, I think it was a big mistake, to be honest. What that is now is kind of. It'll find its feet, but it's, I think it'll all happen way too soon. Uh, BBC Three is a kind of like test space. It's a pilot space for comedy, and then anything that's good kind of gets makes the move to two, like Fleabag, you know, those kind of shows. But there aren't enough quality comedy programmes being commissioned, and it's just like, you know what I mean? Well, why? Well, that's ridiculous. Address the balance, you know, address the yin and yang. Because it is too many kind of, too many kids being murdered and disappearing kids and, you know, kind of, like, it's like when they did the thing about the girls in Rotherham. Someone went, oh, they're doing a drama about that. My response to that was, why? Yeah, yeah. Why are they doing that? It's kind of, I just think, of course, it has, these things have to be addressed. But I really feel, I was very, probably one of the reasons why I'm funny is I grew up in the 70s, and it was like the halcyon days of comedy. It was like, yeah. what I mean, so all? It's just sitcom sketch shows, uh, variety, and it was so brilliantly entertaining. And the things so, that they say back then as well, I mean, there's so many guidelines and, you know, things that you can and can't do. It's very exactly. hard for a comedian nowadays. It's very hard. I mean, uh, I do a character that people probably know, called Bernard Wright on, who is like the politically correct Bernard Manning. And someone said, why aren't you doing him? And I went, oh, well, I just thought. And they went, we're so pertinent now with PC. And it's basically the PC version of Bernard Manning. <laughs> so I come on and I go, there's a black fella, a Pakistani and a Jew in a nightclub having a drink. What a fine example of an integrated community, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so it's just basically, I take the joke that, that used to be offensive and twist it. So it, it, it's, uh, you know, it's correct. PC. Yeah. So, the, yeah, it's tricky. I think the problem with commissioners on TV these days, and it's a terrible thing. I watched the document, I Love Horror, you see. Yeah. Uh, despite my spiritual, uh, you know, uh, side, uh, I, I have a great appetite for uh, horror films. And uh, I watched a documentary about Hellraiser the other week. 
And Barry Norman hated it. And they said, it's a British film with British actors and British crew. You should be singing. You know, it's a good film for it. It's, it's a game changer. 86, 87 it was. And you see it now and it still holds up. And they, they took Barry Norman aside in an office and went, why were you so horrible to me? Well, I don't like horror films. And I thought, what? <laughs> that's terrible. And that's part of the problem. He just didn't like horror films and none of them, no, no decent horror film even got a good. Yeah. And the problem with commissioning editors today, commissioning, uh, commissioners at TV is they, they, they commission what they like. Yeah. They don't see the bigger picture of what the public wants. And they go, oh, I don't like that. I'm not putting it on. It doesn't work like that. You have to be more of an entrepreneur. You have to have more of a business head to see what the mass appeal of it was. It was interesting. Yeah, only yesterday I watched Quiz, you know, the, the drama about the millionaire coughing scandal. Yeah, yeah. And it was very interesting to see that became a phenomenon, was once, who wants to be a millionaire. And that was great commissioning. Yeah. But I remember Andy Harris at uh, Granada was a risk taker. He, yeah. he, t- he took a punt on cold feet. He took a punt on, on, uh, on a lot of shows. Uh, Royal Family, you know, all those kind of shows, and they got made. And like, there's a lot of commissioners I know will just go, no, I'm not made that. Yeah. So I think when we come out of this, there will be a, an absolute appetite for comedy. Yeah, it wasn't just the carrot a huge part of who wants to be a millionaire. Did he have? Yes, he was. That's right. Yeah. Just the carrot. Yeah, the party devised it. Yeah, yeah. He was behind golden balls as well. Do you remember that? <laughs> well, I don't that think. <laughs> I didn't really, t- I didn't really, and I can't say I watched an app, to be honest, of Golden Balls. No, I remember. But you think that. Bullseye? Bullseye used to get 18 million people watch Bullseye. You got a That's speaker across, it. It's so working class as well. It's such a working class show. But I loved it. It was such, 18 million, that's, the, the, that's just all. Yeah. The, everyone embracing it, you know, breaking down class divides. <laughs> Yeah, so simple. There's no shows like that anymore. No. And it, you, I watch Old Bullseye and it's gold. So watch. The questions are quite easy, but it's surprises are fantastic. <laughs> it's such a state now. It's lovely. Yeah. And they'd always get like, they'd win like two people from, you know, Coventry win a speedboat. And it's like, <laughs> Where are they putting that? Gonna share, but how are they going to share it? Oh, you have it next weekend, right? Sharing a boat. Share a boat. Oh, it's so <laughs> funny. Are now <laughs> anyway John you know we've spoken a bit about your career but I've heard that you are um a very keen chef you love to cook you love to go oh, I love to stuff. adore it what I do, do to cook? what's your favorite thing to cook this morning I made a, a, a porridge that's very successful in my house um uh with my eldest daughter and her friends when I uh, and it's chai porridge so Ooh. it's uh, uh it's Oh, uh, let me try and think off the top of my head, the measurements. So 100 grams of oats. And in that is a pinch of cardamom, half a teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg. Lovely. Uh, that goes in there. And yeah. then you then a, pin, a, a large pinch of salt. And then what I put in that is uh, 440 mils of oat milk. Yep. And uh, stir that, uh, stir that in, and then when it's cooking nicely, uh, two large tablespoons of maple syrup, mm-hmm. a tea, and then a dash of uh, vanilla essence. Wonderful! I think we should yeah, have a now, plot on this page with it cooking with John. That'd be that great. is that. That's chai spiced uh, porridge, and it's absolutely. Oh, do you know what you do to finish it off? Yep. Two teaspoons of almond butter. Ah, stirred in. I love a bit of almond butter, and I it like gives it an extra saltiness. Yeah. Yeah. So I had that this. I've made that this morning. But what do I like to cook? Anything? Absolutely anything. I mean, because the lockdown, I want kind of want to limit my shopping trips. I use a uh, HelloFresh. You know the ones that deliver the boxes and you just do the menu things. You've got everything there for you. Really good. So that's been easier. That, you've been using that. But uh, there's not anything. I've not really. There's. I've never really had a disaster to be honest. I don't think. But I've not gone very high. I've got La Russe Gastronomique, which is the encyclopedia of cooking. But I mean, I've not really ventured into the harder, the harder <laughs> realm, you oh, know, yeah. La Scoffier. And <laughs> well, I look forward to it when you do. <laughs> I will do some. I, I mean, it's like I said, you know, I've got a lot of skills to, uh, I've got a, a, quite a high skill set. And it'd be nice to share, you know, some of that with it. Because I, 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 it's difficult because a lot of people do these 
things and I, I, I am very mindful and very, 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 it's about intention. Yeah. And the reason that I want to do these things is to entertain, uh, bring some joy, you know, and, and spread that, you know, and be informative or pass on some words of wisdom from my personal experience. Yeah. Not, it's not about self-promotion and free trainers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why a lot of them have got it wrong. It's just I mean, I've been sent a few NHS t-shirts, but I'm quite happy to, to publicise their gifts. But, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not doing this for the... I'm doing it because I, 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 I like to entertain people. And, you've and, got a lot to offer. You've got a lot of experience and you've got a lot of knowledge to pass on to people. So yeah. thank you so much for the last... However many decades you've been on our screens, I'm sure we're going to be seeing you a lot, lot more in the future, and I hope so too. But just just humour me for a minute, John. Take a quantum jump with me to three years in the future. I know right now in this lockdown, we've had a lot of time to reassess and rethink what we really want to do with our lives, really reevaluate. So take a quantum jump with me to John Thompson, three years in the future. If you could wake up with your dream scenario, where would you be? What would you be doing? Who would you be with? What would that look like to you to manifest? Not exactly the same as it is now. Fantastic. I'm so happy now. I'm just completely happy with the way, uh, the way everything is at the moment. Wonderful. That's something I've had to learn, is to be content with what you've got. And that's one of the problems with uh, gratitude is a terrible problem we've got in this lockdown. Is The thing is, though, count your blessings. I don't have, God, thank God, I don't have a relative that's died of this. I don't have anyone in hospital. I don't have anyone close to me that's poorly with it. I don't have anyone that works for the NHS who's in my family that, that I worry about constantly. I am blessed with, uh, you know, a, a nice life. And I, I, I just, you know, I love the life I have. And if anything else comes along to make it, you know, make, make it better, and I don't mean materially, uh, great, so be it. You know, it's more, I think these days, one thing I do love about getting out and about on my daily walk is the way that people are with each other. I love people have opened up a bit. You know, strangers will say, yeah. That's kind of like, there's a lot of kind of things going back to the past. You know, what I did like was as well when there was a lot of uncertainty about shops and things is massive queues outside the butchers, massive queues outside the fishmonger, massive queues outside the cheese shop. You know what I mean? How it would have been, how it used to be, yeah. you know, back to basics. I mean, there's a lot of, we've got to count our blessings to get through this. And the thing is though, waking up, you know, I remember Wayne Dyer. He he's a brilliant, uh, yeah, he's a brilliant uh, guy. He he does a thing about a meditation at night before he goes to sleep. He said, "Don't fester in your own uh, filth about oh, I had this day today and that." He goes, "Because what you, what you, you what you're doing is pre-programming your subconscious. So mm -hmm. if you go to bed and go, hang on, breathe out, and everything's you know." Get rid of all the, the horror of the day. Anything that's bothered you, anyone who's upset you or anything, and just kind of just clear your mind and then get, get yourself off to sleep. Yeah. Uh, it's so much better than to go over your day and all the bad stuff, you know. Exactly, yeah. You need to let go of it, don't you? I must say, yeah, you do. The subject, we've had so many comments come through about your, your porridge. Everyone's like, Thompson's Tasty Treats needs to happen. <laughs> so we, we've even started a well, there the measurements <laughs> don't overdo it with a cardamom because it makes it a little bit too more too floral I it's such a strong note it and deliver it to them <laughs> Car cardamom is such a strong spice it's don't overpower it it's a pinch of cardamom it will overpower it but uh yeah uh almond butter aldi are doing almond butter yeah, <laughs> so right, you, yeah. get that, you can get it from there Oh, listen, John, thank you so much for this morning. There's, there's so many people. Oh, pleasure. Like. Happy. I wasn't doing loads, anything. <laughs> there's loads of comments underneath, which I'm going to go back and comment. So thank you to everyone who's commented and everyone who's watched so far. That's all right. Well, thanks. That's the, th thanks for having me on. And I just hope we just have a lovely day, everyone. You know, count your blessings. That's all I can and where say. Where can people find you, John? I know you've got your Instagram. Is there anywhere else that people can like follow you? Well, me, let's have a little look at the old, uh, the, the, the devil's device. Let's see. The necessary evil that is the phone. Uh, I try and keep... My screen. I'm, I do like this. Me and the girls, my daughters, compared the screen times last night. It was like a, a bit of a name and shame, really. It's a shocker when you see that screen time. It is, but it's a decent weekend. It's homeschooling today, so they've got the, their all their screen times should be doing bloody homework. That's what it should exactly. be. Exactly. So on on a, on um, Instagram, I'm John Thompson two, which is uh, uh, it's lower lowercase John Thompson T H O M S O N number yeah. two. That's me. It's got a tick. That's me. Um, Facebook on private. Uh, I am on Twitter. 
to be honest, I don't really go on Twitter anymore because I, it's opinions. Yeah. What I love about Facebook it's is it? it's picture. It's changed Twitter massively uh, over the years, and um, I mean, some people I go, I don't really like it. It's opinion. It's very opinionated, and other people go, well, that's a good thing, and they go, it's not. What I'm, life's too short. Sorry, yeah. I'm not there to have a row with a troll. No, absolutely. Instagram, and what we'll do, John, is we'll pop your Instagram handle in this thread. So yeah, you can, me twi you can go on my Twitter. I mean, it, and what I do is the lazy man's way of uh, ticking all the boxes after on, on Insta. Yeah. And it posts them onto my other yeah, social yeah. media. Yeah, that's the way. I'm John, on, 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 on uh, oh yeah, on Twitter, I'm, I'm uh, Johnny, capital J, Johnny, uh, Thompson, capital T. Uh, two, but there's no P in Thompson. Johnny Thompson two uh, uh, on Twitter. But like I say, Facebook's for me, mate. Me mates. Uh, absolutely, that's absolutely. Listen, John, it's been absolutely wonderful seeing you this morning. I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Like I say, yes. My show, the next series of Cold um, Coffee, all of those things, and loads, loads more for you. And obviously, with your new studio now, you're self-sufficient. Literally, the future looks fantastic for you. So. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone to, who's watched on the um, live stream as well. And I oh, thank shall you. See you later. Thanks, John. Take care. Bye. No problem. See you. Bye.